Hey everybody, Stefan the All In Nerd here, and in this video we're going to find out which stripping method that is the best to remove paint from your miniatures. We're going to try out the most popular solutions and put them to the test. And I don't know about you guys, but since the very first time I was about to strip the paint of some miniatures, I've been wondering... What's the best way to get rid of the paint? There's a lot of solutions out there, and some that maybe aren't the best for either humans or the environment. But is there any solutions that is totally environmental friendly? And the answer to that is yes. Stick around and I'll show you. So let's stop wasting time and get on with some stripping. No, 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 cut, 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 cut! We're gonna strip some paint of some miniature models. Was I really not clear on that? No funny business. For this I had some gene stealers, and these will be the test objects for this project. They are primed with Chaos Black, and a Zenithal highlight with Grey Sear from Citadel. After that I airbrushed them with a thick coat of blue or gold from Vallejo's airbrush series. And lastly a layer of matte varnish also from Vallejo. And the products we're gonna try out are Brake Fluid, Green Soap, AK Paint Stripper, 99% Isopropanol Alcohol, also known as IPA, Methylated spirit, also known as tea red, acetone free nail polish remover, and lastly, Biostrip 20. And all solutions are linked in the description if you want to get some after watching this video. The testing of all these different brands took quite some time. Some of the solutions need a bit longer for it to work its magic. We're talking days, even weeks, while others could be used within a few hours or even straight from the bottle. And for the testing, we need some equipment. We're gonna use safety gloves, safety glasses. A plastic tray to try to keep the mess to a minimum, a toothbrush, a funnel with a filter, and some glass and plastic containers. Okay, we're all set. Let's start with the brake fluid. Hey, how's it going down there? Yeah, we're getting there. But don't you think there's an easier way to get some brake fluid? And won't this affect the driving characteristics of the car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk in more fluid fetching. Oh well. All right, I got some. Yeah, that's the stuff. Yeah, all right. This was actually the first solution that I found out about, and it's supposed to be quite potent. And it seems to be quite a popular method too, according to the forum I was reading, even though it's kind of toxic. But the post was from 2008, so maybe they just didn't know better back then. Hmm, 2008. <laughs> okay, there's a few things to keep in mind when using this stuff. It can be irritating for the skin, it can cause serious eye injuries, it can cause allergic reaction and it can injure your fertility. <laughs> I don't have time for kids. Jokes aside, this is the solution where it's most important to use safety glasses and gloves. And listen to this, because this is important. You should absolutely not pour this into the sink, not dump it in the trash or out in the nature. You have to take the fluid to the recycle center when you're done with it. I mean it. This applies to you too, Steven. But I was still a bit concerned when I was about to use the brake fluid because of the environmental issue. So I actually contacted a department that knows a lot about chemistry and asked them, is there a hazard rinsing the model in water when it just has the last residue left on it? And they answered that if it's just the very last residue, it's likely that it wouldn't matter. But of course you should try to get rid of as much as possible before rinsing it. So we got the green light. I left the blue one in for 24 hours, which seemed to be the recommended time. And I left the golden one in for two weeks to check if the model would get a bit rubbery, which apparently was an issue when you left it in for too long. So after 24 hours I started scrubbing on the blue one with a toothbrush. And the paint came off really easy. Sure, even the plastic glue got dissolved, so some assembly had to be required again to get it ready for new paint. But the paint really came off smooth. And after two weeks I did the same to the golden one, and the result came out the same. So really easy to strip, some limbs came off, but it didn't get rubbery. 
And a funny thing happened during this test. In the bottom of the jar of brake fluid, I found an old hand from Jorn the Fettle Handed. And that model is one of the few models that I've stripped before using brake fluid. And it's been laying in that jar for like 8 to 9 months. It hadn't dissolved, but it was really, really rubbery. And even after a few weeks out of the jar, it was still the same. Rubbery and fragile. But I would say that the brake fluid really does the job well. But if you don't like to handle toxic solutions, I would recommend some of the other solutions in this test. And I didn't test this stuff on resin, but I heard that you should stay away from it. Okay, this test took forever, so let's pick up the pace. On to the next one. Green soap. If you're looking for a very green option to use, no pun intended, this could be the option for you. This is not a quick fix, so if you're in a rush, one of the other solutions would do the job faster. The best way with this solution is just to drench your models in the soap and forget about them. I heard people leaving them in for months without them taking damage. But apparently they didn't get any easier to strip compared to just having them in for a few days either. And this should work on resin models as well I've heard. There's no need to use gloves and safety glasses when handling this solution. We soaked the blue one for 24 hours. And when scrubbing it, we're getting down to the primer with a tint of blue still. So I tried soaking it for another week after that. But still it was just down to the primer. So I tried to leave the golden one for two weeks before scrubbing it. But still, it wouldn't get rid of the primer. But if you're just trying to get rid of the base coat and the varnish, the green soap works. And I guess you don't need to prime it again. So the green soap did disappoint a bit. I expected more. But let's head on to the next one. Pro tip! When rinsing your models in the sink, don't forget to put in a plug. Because some paint strippers will weaken or dissolve the glue like the brake fluid. And you don't want to flush some parts down the drain. AK paint stripper. So this stuff is supposed to be really good. In the own test they soak one model for 3 minutes and just brush it straight on another one. So I'll try the same. So I soaked the blue one for 3 minutes and a lot of the paint came straight off in the cup even before the actual scrubbing. The base coat came off really easy, but the primer took a little bit of scrubbing to get rid of. With a brush you can actually decide which part of the paint model you want to strip. You don't have to strip it all off if you don't want to. But it did a great job with that as well, straight from the container. And now we're in the middle of the video, which means I'm about to tell you to like and subscribe, so... On to the next one. Isopropanol alcohol, 99%. Isopropanol alcohol, also known as IPA, usually comes in 70, 91 or 99% purity. And the higher the purity, the more potent it will be for stripping paint. I think the result would be quite poor with just 70%. But it's very similar to the methylated spirit one, so we're gonna try that one after this. Now we'll have the miniatures soaked for 3 minutes, 1 hour, 3 hours and 24 hours. 3 minutes seem to be a bit too short for it to give a great result. Sure, it removes most paint and primer, but some is left in the crevices. After 1 hour the result is totally fine. There are still some small patches in crevices here and there that could be redone if you want to, but no real need for it really. And the result of the 3 hours is similar to the result of the 1 hour. And due to lack of scrubbing it even looked a bit worse. But it's easy to fix. And on to the 24 hour test. The paint strips off really easy and less scrubbing is needed. But a small bright residue is left on the model after it's cleaned. The same thing happened with the rest of the tests, but I don't think it'll be noticeable after it's been primed again. But what happens if you would leave your models in the IPA for 1-2 to two weeks? Would they take any damage? Ooh. Let's try it out. The paint is coming off really easy, but no big difference compared to the 24 hour test for either the 1 or 2 week soak. And there doesn't seem to have taken any damage either. Apparently you can leave your models in the IPA for quite some time without having to worry. But it won't make it easier to strip the paint off either. Methylated spirit or tea red as we call it in Sweden is really cheap and it's easy to get your hands on. 3 minute test first. Here the methylated spirit worked better than the IPA. It's down to the bare plastic. But the small crevices in the hands are hard to get into. Let's jump straight into the 3 hour test since the 3 minute test works so good. And the result is about the same. Some more scrubbing with some more solvent could have gotten it even cleaner but no real need. So now we just need to check if the models get damaged from being soaked in the methylated spirit for a longer amount of time. I tried 24 hours and a week. The result is about the same as after 3 hours, and no damage taken. The only difference is that the miniature that soaked for one week got some bright residue on the black base. But nothing to worry about. Let's carry on to the next one. 
Acetone Free Nail Polish Remover. Now this I didn't think too much of, and I mainly added it to fill out my test group after finding it as a recommended product. But boy was I surprised. The first surprise came when I was about to pick up the model from the plastic container after the 3 minute test. The solution had melted a hole in the container. Luckily I had it in the plastic tray so catastrophic mess avoided. But this made me a bit worried about my model. Did it survive? It did and the paint came off super easy. And no damage seems to have been caused to the model either. Yay! But since it worked a bit too good with 3 minutes, maybe it could be brushed straight on to remove the paint. And it did! Sure it took a little bit of brushing and some solvent to keep the paint coming off, but it really worked great. So a little bit of soaking in this solvent would be good, but make sure not to do it in a plastic container to avoid a mess. No need to make any more tests with this one. A bit of caution should be taken though when using this, since it's so potent. And I wouldn't use it for resin models either. Onwards! Biostrip 20! I've heard a lot of good stuff about this product, so I'm eager to try it out. You get 500 milliliters in this bucket, so you'll be able to use it on a lot of models. And water-based, non-toxic and easy to use is how they market themselves, and that sounds pretty good to me. They still recommend using gloves though, so don't forget about that part. Safety first! They recommend to leave the model soaked for about an hour, scrub it and then let it soak a bit more for the last remains of paint. And the result of it in one hour isn't that bad, but let's put it back in for another hour. The result after the second soak is really good as you can see. There is still some dark in the crevices on the hands, like the other solvents, but that's nothing that will show after priming. I did try to leave the model for a week as well to see if it took any damage. And the result came out fine. No worries about leaving your plastic models in this stuff for a while. The Biostrip 20 is quite thick, but a good thing with it being thick is that it's brushable onto bigger models that you can't fully submerge. So let's try that on this Rhino right here. It's really easy to apply with a brush, and when it's covered we'll leave it for one hour. Ok, an hour is gone and we're starting cleaning it with our toothbrush. Ok, the top layer comes out very easy and it seems to be either another base coat that's red underneath or a red primer. Either way, the two colors just kind of mixes and it isn't really coming off. Maybe I just didn't soak it for long enough. I had to use a bigger brush to scrub this one. And after rinsing it in water it still had some sticky residue left on it. So I covered it again to leave it for another hour. Rinsing it again and now I could go back to the toothbrush. The end result isn't bad, but there's still a thin layer that just isn't coming off. So we're gonna try using some of the other solutions to see if they can remove the residue. The AK worked like a charm. And sure, methylated spirit and IPA also worked, but not as efficient. And the acetone free nail polisher? Hell, that nail polishing stuff isn't playing around. It must be really potent since the paint come off that easy. The Bystrip 20 should work on resin models, but it shouldn't be soaked for long. This is how the resin parts on the Rhino looked after being soaked for 2 hours. On the positive side, the Bystrip 20 doesn't smell all that bad compared to some of the other ones, and it's reusable. And you do get quite a lot of it, but with every model dipped into the pot you also get some stripped paint left in there, and after a while I guess it gets a bit diluted and less potent. The final conclusion! Ok, the conclusion after these extremely scientific tests. If you need to get your mini stripped and time isn't an issue, all these solutions worked. If you're in a hurry the AK stripper and the acetone free nail polish did the best job. The nail polish is a lot cheaper considering you'll only get 100ml with the AK stripper and a whole liter with the nail polish. It depends on how many models you're going to strip. If you don't mind waiting 1-3 to three hours, the IPA, Methylated Spirit and the Biostrip 20 work fine. And if waiting a day isn't a problem, the brake fluid stripped the paint off really smooth. But it is toxic, and it also dissolves some of the plastic glue. And of course, if you want to be kind to the environment and don't mind scrubbing and waiting a week or so, the green soap did an okay job, at least down to the primer. And if I would have to use any of these on metal models, I would probably use the acetone free nail polish, since it seemed to be the most potent one. Okay guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you to decide which method to go with in the future. If it did, please give it a like, leave a comment. Until next time.